How are you guys doing? So I've been, <laughs> so typically I release a podcast every single Monday. I actually have not missed a Monday for over a year and a half, right? Actually almost two years because two years will be in June. So we're <laughs> almost there. Um, but I missed releasing my podcast yesterday because I was really stuck. And I kind of wanted to share with you where I'm struggling because I know during this time of uncertainty, a lot of people are struggling and I don't have all the answers. I've never thought I did, but I wanted to share with you some of my processes of how I am guarding my life and how I am honoring myself in this uncertain time and what practices I've put in place because like getting your best version of yourself, your fittest version, it's about practice, right? And so I thought I would share with you what am I doing to support myself through this struggle? Um, what am I doing you know, to keep myself more positive than not. Um, but I'll share with you a little bit of the dark side because I know, you know, we can all relate to that right now. So this weekend was really tough for me. So my husband was working all week last week, so he wasn't around at all. And, you know, yes, it was hard to solo it out with my kids and, and homeschool on my own and still try to run my online studio and do the podcast and all the rest, but I was able to manage it, right? Um, but my, my husband works in the funeral industry and I intentionally do not listen to the news. I literally consume the news maybe once a week through channels that I know are reliable and that'll give me only the facts. So the World Health Organization, Center of Disease Control, CDC, right? Other than that, I really limit what I consume. And this is intentional because I know for me, I'm a bit of an empath. I get really affected by the news. I actually have not watched the news for probably a decade. Like I don't listen to the news. I don't listen to 680. I don't listen to talk radio. I mean, if you're a client of mine, you know that I get a lot of my news updates from you guys, right? I didn't hear, you remember when those kids were stuck in that cave in Thailand? I literally did not hear about that probably two weeks after it was actually happening because I don't consume the news unless it's going to benefit me, educate me, fuel me, add value to my life. I don't need to, it, it in my life because, and not to say that I'm not informed. I, you can get information other ways from credible sources that are giving you the facts, but this is a way that I manage my environment so that these negative things that are going on in the world are not bringing me down. Right? So this is a choice that I make. And because of that, I'm able to keep my, what's the world, my periphery really tight and hone into the things that will fuel me and the things that will progress my life, my business, my psyche, right? This is very intentional. But with my husband being in the business that he's in, he's very informed and he's listening to all the different media channels. And when he was off work, on Saturday and I was interacting with him. Of course, I'm his wife, I wanna be supportive, I wanna know what's going on and hear the struggles that he's having because we're all dealing with this uncertainty and this stress. But it really affected me. It really pulled me into the vortex of negativity, of all the negative news that is going around and it doesn't allow me to get into the practical things of my life, being reminded and remembering being present that I'm safe, I am healthy, right? Come on, we're just talking. I'm safe, I'm healthy, my kids are healthy, you know, they're getting the education and getting homeschooled as best as possible that I can do right now. And when you hear about all the negativity and all the things that are going on and all focusing on the fear, and the virus and the death around it, it makes it really difficult to see the light and to see the opportunities and to see the silver lining amongst this all. Because if you focus on those things, what you are grateful in these moments for, into the things that, you know, the silver lining in this, 
that we get to slow down, that we get to be our kids and get to be present with them different than ever before. Yes, maybe we do practice being present with them, but this is unprecedented, unlike any other time, right? And this is not about the extended vacation. This is about us being able to sit and seeing our kids for who they are and seeing them you know, do the schoolwork that we never had the opportunity to because we're not teachers, most of us, right? Um, When we focus on the negativity, we miss all of that, right? Sloni, can you go upstairs for a minute? Mommy needs five minutes, okay? I know. Okay, so go do your reading. Thank you, my love, right? And so I lost that sense. And so literally I had a really bad Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And, you know, I've been fortunate to be in my practices of mindfulness, of being present, of breath, of meditation, of movement that allows me to pause and take an external observer perspective on my life. And, you know, I had a really rough day yesterday being Monday because there's a lot of anxiety for me around, you know, Monday getting back on the schoolwork and doing that whole thing, not being a teacher, not feeling like I can be productive enough with my kids. And I just kind of sat back yesterday afternoon, had a bit of a meltdown in the morning and just kind of took the perspective of, you know, what is it around my ego that is fueling this whole overwhelm and panic and fear and anxiety? And, you know, I wanted to share a couple things with you. You know, the reality is this is an unprecedented time. I do not have a job right now, right? Nobody is sponsoring this podcast. Nobody is, I don't have all my clients into my online studio, No one, not a lot of people are doing one-on-one virtual training. And so the reality is I'm probably going to have to go on EI. And the reality is I may not have my fitness business after this the way that it was before, right? I may not have 30 clients that I'm supporting to do one-on-one training. I may not have my group classes anymore. Um, And I'm in the midst of pivoting for that, actually. I'm supporting people that are trying to pivot and put their studios online like I have, right? Because I think it is a powerful platform to support our clients through movement. Because what I do know for certain during this time is that, you know, health is our wealth. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is the emergency plans putting into play, right? And that in those times, to be able to be resilient in our bodies, in our health through this, it demands us to take a stand on our health like never before. And I know that physiologically, if you move your body, if you do the resistance training, if you do the HIIT workouts, if you move your body and sweat, different than yoga and going for a walk, it will help metabolize those stress hormones in your body, right? It will build resiliency. It will build strength. strength. It will boost your immune system unlike anything else, right? It is the mind leads the body, the body leads the mind, that ecosystem of building strength, getting comfortable with the discomfort that'll make you stronger through this. It'll make you stronger coming out of this and it'll set you up for success hereafter. That I know for certain, right? So actually, if you know any trainers that need support with that, if you know any trainers that were running a small studio, that were personal trainers, that were yoga instructors that have a client base, but don't know how to support them and need the infrastructure, the back end, let me know. Let them know that I can support them. I am able to build out a studio for people so they are live and online within four or five days right? A week turnaround time that they can start supporting their clients so that their health is supported through this, right? So in saying that in pivoting during this time, I think that these things that you can do for yourself, these practical things that you can put in place to actually actually measure quantifiably, qualitatively in your life, go back to grade nine science, right? If you can get rid of those things, if you can minimize the way that you're watching the news, right? If I can guard my conversation and my realm of self-preservation around my husband in a way that helps me with my self-preservation right now, that is important. I have doubled down on 
going inwards, meditation. You know, um, there are some amazing apps right now. You can use Insight Timer. You can li listen to my conversation with Tracy Sagrati on the podcast last week. She has some great tips also, so you can get into your breath. There are some great guided meditation that amazing yogis, meditation gurus are doing right now. I can post some of those resources below. Get into that. This is the time. Wake up 30 minutes earlier if you're saying to me while listening to this or watching this that I don't have the time, Catherine. I have to homeschool my kids. I do too, right? If you are still working, use that space. To make it a sacred practice in the morning, in the evening, on your lunch breaks if you are working, right? Make it a sacred practice to find something to guide you through this time, right? Move your body, guys. Move your body. If it is not with me, find a hit workout online. If fitness is new to you, find something. There are some amazing beginner workouts that will be rigorous enough that you can use that step, one step at a time, that baby step forward. And, you know, I know some people have reached out and thank you to all of you that reached out. Like, I got a beautiful email from Liza, one of my podcast listeners. Liza, if you're listening to this, shout out to you. That, that email actually brought me to tears. And I'm so grateful for those that view that listen week after week, right? Share conversations with this with others. And I know that maybe we're not commuting like we used to the, to the office. So we don't listen to this every day because it's not in the realm of our natural habits. Make it a habit to find a conversation like this, a podcast, a book. You know, Gabby Bernstein has great books, podcasts through Oprah, either visual or not. If you are Netflix and chilling, download um, FM TV. This is food, medicine, TV. I don't know. I've had it for a couple of years now. They have some great content. Get rid of the shit that maybe we're consuming that is not fueling our psyche, right? Add in one thing, a five minute video that is motivational, inspiring, that is educational, that is positive education, right? Double down on those things that will fuel you and ignite you. Maybe if you are out of a job right now, there are some amazing free resources. I don't know where my phone is right now, but <laughs> I, will, I will share that with you also because I know some, I think it's Unify, some amazing online education platforms that are giving content away for free. So if you always wanted to learn about positive psychology, if you wanted to learn about human behavioral science, well, these are things that I'm into. But if it's something like knitting or quantum physics or... I don't know, biology or something that, I don't know, I'm so nerdy. I go to like the nerd things, but if it's like economics that you always wanted to learn about something around economics or I don't know, whatever you're interested in, there are resources right now that people are giving away for free that you can educate yourself and increase that knowledge base for yourself that can re-inspire you, get you excited right now in a time that can feel super daunting. And so I just wanted to get this out, right? So for me, this is my brain dump, right? I have a beautiful platform, the opportunity to share with you one-on-one -on -one in this solo dialogue so that you can get informed in a way and for me to get the thoughts in my head out. But one of the things that is also proven that you can use, because not everyone has a podcast, not everyone's going to go live, not everyone's going to share their thoughts on YouTube in a way that I have, and that's okay. But the science around journaling is actually proven now. Everyone thinks that it was like a woo-woo thing, like, oh, let's do talk therapy with ourselves and put it down on a journal. No, it actually is proven. I've actually been bringing around my own journal all the time. Follow your dreams is this journal. And this is pages and pages and pages and pages of my writing, getting my thoughts onto paper. Because one thing that the science around journaling says is that if you brain dump, if you get those thoughts that float around and then disappear and then come back, some of those thoughts, those limiting beliefs that haunt us every single day, if you get them onto paper, if you put them into a journal, and it doesn't have to be formal, but at least it'll be a sacred space of which you can take pen to paper. It 
actually will change the neuroscience in your brain so that you can release those thoughts and let them go, right? And so start with gratitude. You know, I spoke with Dr. Jillian Mandich last week about this, and I've spoken about this a million times on my podcast if you've been listening. Find just three things that you're grateful for. Write them down, right? It repatterns the neural pathways, the positive reinforcement, that cognitive behavioral therapy to remind you to say, yes, I am safe. I'm grateful that I'm safe right now, that I am quarantined, but I am safe. I'm grateful that I'm healthy, that my body is strong and resilient because your body is, guys, your body is strong. I'm grateful that I can listen to this podcast and get a little bit of inspiration and find a way to maybe take on one habit today, go for a walk, do 10 jump, 20 jumping jacks, do 20 jumping jacks, 20 jump squats, 20 sit-ups, 20 push-ups, three times in a row. That will give you your 10 minutes, right? That is kind of metabolic conditioning, simplest form. So do that. I'm grateful I can move my body. I'm grateful I have food to eat today, right? Because some people are struggling even that, right? I am grateful for me that I have disposable income that I can give back to the local food bank right now because they are struggling. I'm grateful that I had my kids last week on Sunday go to McDonald's, buy 10 Happy Meals, give it to 10 homeless people so people remember that they are not forgotten, right? So use that. Take pen to paper, right? I've been journaling about where I'm struggling. And oftentimes, if you get that out of your head and onto paper, saying that this really sucks, I'm super anxious right now because I feel overwhelmed, I feel helpless. For me, it's about EI, me depending on EI. I didn't even take out EI, guys, when I, I didn't go even on maternity leave, self-employed, right? And I didn't get money from the government when I was on mat leave. And so I feel like me having to consider taking EI is a massive failure, right? But working through that by writing and journaling about it has been helpful, has given me clarity and saying that that's a limiting belief, that I'm a failure because I'm taking EI. No, there are things in place right now to support all of us so that we can move through this time and focus on being with our kids if you are homeschooling in a way that is productive for them and is actually productive. In fact, that is the biggest success that I could have right now is supporting my kids through the social emotional part of this, through the academic part of this, actually doing the work that their schools are setting out, the you know, the lessons, the reading, the exploration, that is the biggest gift of why EI is there, right? Taking my own advice through this all. And so if you take one thing from today's conversation, what can you be grateful in? Can you take on a practice if you don't already have one? If you have a practice of meditation, can you double down on it? If you don't, can you take on Deepak Chopra and Oprah, right? Can you do those little things of taking pen to paper, just three things you're grateful for, or where are you struggling that gets it out of your head and onto paper and literally leave it there, right? Transmuting that stress here and leaving it there and leaving it to the universe to create abundance around you. And one thing that I do know is what you wire in your life, right? We spoke with Sujan Dada probably about a year ago, who is one of um, Joe Dispenza's friends, right? Where your attention goes, energy flows. And if you bring your attention to your grateful moments, that silver lining, what are you grateful for? That's where the energy flows. And then you will start seeing the silver lining showing up a little bit more, right? in how we are right now. And you know what? Maybe I'll ask Sujan to jump on another podcast with us and talk about exactly that, how we can put our attention to the things that matter, the silver lining, the gratitude things, because that's where the energy will come up. And when you look around you and see those positive people, like why is their life turning up better than mine? Why is it that great things keep happening to them, 
well, that's where it is. It is wiring that. It is bringing that abundance, that energy into your life that becomes infectious in a positive way, that becomes contagious, that all of a sudden, energetically, your field expands. It's neuroscience, people. It's not this woo-woo things that people used to believe that it was. It is expanding your energetic field of positivity that expands it. When you are in scarcity, fear, and panic, it kind of closes in. And then all of a sudden, that's all it is. There's no abundance that's going to flow to you because you are this charge of negativity that pushes everything away. But when you grow this field of positivity and radiance, when your attention is seeing the beauty in these moments of uncertainty and unprecedented crisis, it just expands that field to attract the same to you, right? And it will help you with your immune system, It'll help you with your psyche. It'll help you in those moments that you have to show up for yourself and say, you know what? I'm going to do that 15 minute workout. I'm going to show up for myself just for 10 minutes to move my body. And even, especially if you are a front line worker, I have an emergency medicine doctor, that emergency physician that is in the hospital, frontline workers that are showing up for themselves inside my studio because they know the science, the medicine behind that, this showing up for yourself, moving your body will help relieve the stress, right? And look, if you are a nurse, PSW, um, physician, emergency worker that are listening to this, or if you know somebody, reach out to me. I would love for you to join our online studio for free, right? Because I think that this is super important. But if you can take anything back to taking something away from today, find something that you can add in as a ritual this week. And I want to know, I want to hear from you, whether it's via email at info at katherinetanaka.com, whether it's on one of the you know, social media platforms, reach out to me on Instagram, reach out to me on Facebook, tweet at me on Twitter if you're on Twitter. Um, and I want to know, how are you doing? What are you taking on? Share with me a positive. And if you have nothing positive right now, reach out to me so I can support you because this is what it's about. Even though we are in social isolation, sorry, social distancing more than ever, it doesn't mean that it has to be isolation, that we can form communities outside of this, that we can be connected this way. And so I thank you for listening and I thank you for reaching out, right? Thanks in advance because I want you to. I am here. I've built this platform to create connection because there is so much distance and these conversations make us know that we are one. We are not separate. We are together in this more now than ever. And so reach out to me. I want to hear from you. This is your invitation to reach out to me. Thank you so much for listening. I promise you on Thursday, in a couple days, listen for Jillian Mandich, Dr. Jillian Mandich, the doctor of happiness, how she can give you tangible things that she's sharing globally with her community of how to deal with unprecedented time. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.